Hello and welcome to the Brawl Project. Today we're going to be doing a deck tech of Kalia Zenith Seeker and playing a few games with this deck. It's a really sweet one. If you like looking at the top seven cards of your library and picking up cards to put in your hand, this is this is a good deck for you. So Kalia is a 3-3 Flying Vigilance for red, white, and black mana, and she says, when she enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal an angel card, a demon card, and or a dragon card from among them and put them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom uh, of your library in a random order. So obviously we're going to want to fill this deck up with some angels, demons, and dragons. <laughs> you can search through all the cards in standard and see what's available. You've got your really good ones like Skarg and Hellkite, Dracuseth, Safara, and then you've got some cards that are not necessarily the best, like uh, Sarah Angel makes the cut, I think, in this one. Sarah's Guardian's another one that we're reaching for. As far as demons go, Rakdos kills most of the creatures that you have because you don't have that many demons. Embodiment of Agonies might not be the best. But hey, they're free cards if you get them off of Kalia. And you know what? They all fly and they all attack for a lot of damage, even if they're a little clunky. So playing the commander uh, is pretty good for refueling on uh, threats. And it takes a while to, to cast Kalia and then cast whatever you get off of Kalia. So we're going to need some ways of buying time or granting us additional mana. And that's going to fill out the rest of the deck. We've got the 14 or so slots for angels, demons, and dragons. And then we've got a lot of slots for removal and, and uh, mana sources. So we've got Firemind Vessel, Spinning Wheel, Mana Geode, Chromatic Lantern, Arcane Signet, 5 Mana Rocks. Then we also have, as far as removal goes, Epic Downfall, Reef Soul, Lava Coils, D-Spark, Final Payment, Mortify, Bedevil, Price of Fame, and a couple sweepers in Ritual of Soot and Deafening Clarion. Definitely want to reset the board and then start casting our expensive spells. Outside, I mean, that's most of the deck, like removal and cards to find off of Kalia. The only two real exceptions are we have Crashing Drawbridge, very few of our creatures have haste and and having crashing drawbridge out not only blocks up the ground and tries to keep us alive but it also lets us attack with some of our big flying creatures the turn that we play them oh i should have mentioned we also have realm cloak giant as a sweeper uh, and the other one is tome of legends tome of legends is fantastic with most three mana commanders as if they're creatures and if they can attack. Kalia attacks pretty well. 3-3 three, three Flying Vigilance. You can curve Tome of Legends into Kalia and then start attacking with Kalia. And then you'll have plenty of uh, counters saved up on the Tome of Legends to draw cards whenever you feel like it. The mana requirements in this deck are very difficult. You've got a lot of double white, double black, double red. And then Kalia has three specific colors and like Feather has, you know, white, white, red. Villas is even triple black. You've got triple, yeah, you've basically got triple, triple white, triple red, and triple back in this deck. So the mana base is pretty tricky. We're playing basically as many cards as we can that make uh, two colors of mana. It's also part of why we're playing so many mana rocks. Um, and then a few basics to hopefully come into play untapped. No, no colorless lands, not for this deck. All right, there you have it. The deck is a little slow and clunky, but. It uh, does some really powerful stuff and uh, doesn't really run out of fuel very easily because you can always cast your commander and pick up a few more expensive cards to play. Alright, we're going to play about seven games with this deck. Stay tuned, I hope you enjoy, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back with game one momentarily. Here we go, game one with Kalia against Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. This hand looks fantastic. I mean, well, I don't know. I, we've got Kali on three. I guess that doesn't actually matter. Um, eh. I'm going to keep it. Um, if they can accelerate out their Yorvo, we can epic downfall it. Heck, we can just epic downfall it on turn three anyway. Ooh, looks like they're going the super low to the ground version. Okay, well. Um, I'm going to play a Temple of Triumph. I would like some untapped lands. Certainly, lands are the most important thing here. Untapped lands are even better than just lands, I guess. Alright, so they're gonna make this attack. Sure. Ooh, untapped swamp. Excellent. Okay, so this is going to let us price of fame that Yorvo 
at the end of their turn so we can do something uh, with the mana that we have this turn. Go, go ahead and do that now. Alright, so surveilling. What are we going to look for here? Just jamming Kalia isn't too bad here, honestly. Um, Doom Whisperer. It's kind of an expensive card. Also, like... These cards in the graveyard just have a little bit of value uh, value with Embodiment of Agonies. And you know what? I'm just gonna have I'm just gonna have enough flyers with Kalia, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um I, I don't think that just drawing them naturally off the top of my deck is where I wanna be. Okay. Uh so this turn I've got the Epic Downfall, which doesn't do anything, and I have Kalia. So I'm gonna play Kalia and we're gonna roll the dice. Let's see what we get. Okay, Dracoseth and Sarah's Guardian. I don't have to pick up both of them, notably, right? Um, so this is six drop and a seven drop. We are miles away from playing the seven drop. We also have a Safara, which is probably a better seven drop. Um, I think it, I think I'm okay just picking up one of these, honestly. Sarah's Guardian's like kind of nice when you're against aggressive decks because you can attack with your big creatures and not worry about. No, not having a blocker. Right. So opponent, Marley Raven. Alright. Making a 3 3 Pelt Collector. And a Rabbit Bite. Okay, so we are fighting. Um, this Epic Downfall, notably, still doesn't kill anything. Alright, well, this is really awkward. Um, I've got the fourth land. I've got a 3 drop that takes double black, which I have, but I can't play it here. We're just gonna take a ton of damage here. Alright, I don't think I can actually win this one. I'm at two? Yeah, not even... Not even Tome of Legends is gonna cut it. Alright, well our opponent curved out and got us good. Show them what's up with this epic downfall. <laughs> that one turn of just doing nothing absolutely destroyed us. Um, yeah, alright. <laughs> Definitely one weakness of the deck is that we've got a lot of really expensive flyers. Okay, let's go on to another game. Here we are against Golos. It'll be interesting to see what version of Golos this is. I'll just go ahead and keep this. It's got all three colors. It's got our first four land drops. We need to hit our lands in this deck. Um, an Accelerant would be a nice addition to this deck, but I think I'm pretty okay with them. Also, we've got a D-Spark for the Golos. It's not... The, you know, insane, but it is a measure that you have to, you just have to do it. <laughs> you can't let your opponents have a goalless in play at 7 mana and just cast a bunch of cards for free. It's not acceptable. Arcane Signet, that's a good start. Alright, well, we're gonna go Kalia, we can follow it up with Seraph of the Scales. Let's see what we get here. Uh, Recto, Sarah Guardian. Mm, I think that Sarah's Guardian is going to be better here, and we don't need to discard the hand size by taking Rakdos also. If the game goes long enough, we can pick it up later, potentially. So that's four mana. Do you have an answer for Kalia? Use the Paradise. Okay. Yeah, let's just play Seraph. Notably, Re uh, Reef Soul also works against Golos. So we're probably going to see a Golos here. Footfall Caves into Golos. I feel like with this deck, most of the time you just want to cast your <laughs> cast your commander as much as possible. Hey, as Wrath. All right, to the command zone we go. If I draw an untapped land, we can play a Sarah Angel. If not, well, that's not too bad. We get to take the turn off to draw cards. Get to? I don't know if get to is the right word. Have to? Um, let's see. We don't really need the colors, I guess. Hmm. An untapped land would have been pretty good, because then we could despark at end of turn to get the Golos, and then untap and play something big. As it stands, we're going to have to... Uh, we're just gonna have to like Reeve Soul and then despark when they play it again, something like that. Okay. Um, well, 
Actually, you know what? If that's the plan, I'm going to play the Black Source. And we're going to attack for two. So I have to imagine Dulce is coming down now. There we go. We're going to get to Reeve Soul Golos. Um, let's see if we get the chance to do something else. Oh, looks like we have Field of the Dead over there. Can't really interact with that. Alright, Reeve Soul it is. I guess we would like to continue hitting lands here. So that we can keep on top. We'll attack these. We've got final payment or D Spark. Yep, there's another Golos. And then we've got mana for like Sarah's Guardian, I suppose. Just try to play the most expensive card in our hand each time. Alright, let's despark that. You know, if they play a planeswalker that's problematic, maybe I would have wanted to keep the despark and uh, sacrifice or pay the final payment instead. On the other hand, you know what? If I play Kalia, I get to draw a card with Tome of Legends, and that's pretty sweet. Alright, I'm sold. <laughs> I am. It is not difficult to convince me a lot of the time. That's a good one. It's got haste. It's not a bad one either. Uh, yeah, I'm just tapped. Okay, let's attack. Hitting our land drops would be good. They can probably just recast this. Drawn into dreams. Drawn from dreams, rather. Alright. Too bad I can't sacrifice this Arcane Signet. If they play some sort of human, I might be able to play Opportunistic Dragon and sacrifice it with uh, Final Payment. Okay, we're losing the Tome of Legends. No, we're losing Kalia. Okay, Manzo. It's kind of interesting. Really? Exemplar of Justice. Alright, well, we could play Kal Kalia again. That doesn't seem great. Um, she's pretty expensive. We're not going to hit the land anyway. Could play Opportunistic Dragon to cut our opponent off of the mana. That doesn't seem too bad. Uh, this will stay tapped for when they get it back anyway. But that doesn't use our mana as efficiently. I think I want to play something expensive. Actually, yeah, I guess that's just, I guess that's just Sarah Guardian, right? <laughs> All right. It's the five five flyer for six. I guess I get Vigilance for whatever that's worth. Probably going to see some sort of... Well, I don't know. Cavalier of Dawn into Sweep is kind of a weird sequence. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that playing that D-Spark instead of Final Payment may not have been the best. Okay. Punk continues to play Sweepers. No surprise there. <laughs> play sweepers and then place three creatures. Alright. Uh, none of these are humans. Can't pick them up. Um, I've got seven mana, so I can't even do anything with these. Alright, I guess I'm just playing Sarah Angel this turn. Alright, here's Golos. We've got to kill it, <laughs> and we'll just pay life in order to do so. Not a good sign if they're keeping it on top. Also, they've got an army of zombies. Sarah Angel does block the zombies as long as it stays alive, but they do have three mana here. Alright, still Skullos. Pay five life. Alright, so I'm going to be able to do two things this turn, that's nice. Um, let's play this, and assuming the Sarah Angel survives, let's uh, spawn a Mayhem. Attack for six. 
Cast the spectacle. All these zombies on the ground don't really matter. They do have a Cavalier of Dawn if they want to kill some one of my flyers. If they want to sweep, they have to sacrifice all their creatures. But they've not really worked terribly hard to get. But it does come out of the claws. Okay, plenty of cleansing. They also took one of their mana sources out there. Chandra! Ow. Alright, let's go to Craig. Um, I can start attacking Chandra. Um, I'm wondering if that's good use here. I think it's probably better to either play Kalia, or probably these two is better. Feather plus Opportunistic Dragon. It's not killing Chandra either way. If I play Hellkite, it's just going to get blown up by Cavalier of Dawn. So are we going to do this and sweep? Everyone knows the bigger explosions are more fun. Cameo. Pick something up, perhaps. Recurring time wipe. Okay. Not draw land. I was hoping to draw land there because I could have played Hellkite and just shot Tamio. Here, I'm going to have to play Hellkite and attack Tamio. I think. I think that's the best line for me. Get haste. Make sure Tamio can't stick around. I think our opponent has the long game. I mean, seems pretty likely. That's what tends to happen when you're playing a Golos game, a Golos deck, is you have the long game. don't have enough mana to play Golos. If they've got any sort of counter magic, they can counter one of our expensive spells. I think... Well, it depends on what I draw. Okay, Turning Tamiyo and Gift of Paradise and Gaining Life? Is that what they did? Okay, sure. Hmm. Alright, well... I'll play Doom Whisper. Crashing Drawbridge at least makes it so that, um, I mean, we're probably just getting time wiped here, but they have to respect the Crashing Drawbridge, otherwise we can do some serious damage one way or another. Yeah, that's the time wipe. No surprise. Hope it's not too hot for ya. Cameo can just pick the time wipe up again. Or, uh, Plain White Celebration? That actually seems pretty good. I follow the yeah, that's what they got. Alright, I mean, play Villas. I don't know how good this is gonna, what good this is gonna do, but, you know. I just have camera. Alright! Okay. Well, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with goals is hard. We uh, <laughs> did not get there. Let's go on to another game. All right, I wasn't expecting this one. Here we go in the Kalia Mirror. I've got a pretty good card in Realm Cloak Giant here. We're going to keep this. <laughs> nice. All right, well, we've got lands. So that's a good start. I have no idea what swings the mirror. Both players are going to have clunky draws involving really big flyers. I guess being second, if I can pretend to stumble and then play Rome Cook Giant, maybe I can do something. Whoa! Okay, this is not expected. So this is just a Mardu deck? 
All right, maybe I need a sweeper that comes a little early. Oh, Geode's actually really good for us because we can play Geode on turn three and then on turn four, we can Realm Cloak Giant. Butcher into Signet? This is a bit strange. Oh well, I mean, this is the plan we're gonna do. I could have just played Feather. That's not a crazy idea. I'll keep final payment. Just does some spot removal to, to follow up the sweeper. It's gonna hit us for a fair amount. There's Kalia. We're just gonna sweep with Realm Cloak Giant. Yeah, we take four here, but gotta get off the table. Let's get another black source. Alright, let's try this again. Down to 16. Final payment's gonna hurt. Not gonna lie. Judith. Yeah, they're, they're doing something that's definitely a lot different from what I was doing. Okay, so what are we going to do? We've got six mana. We can play Feather plus Kalia. I kind of like that. Um, Body Mint of Agnes just <laughs> does a lot of nothing. So if our plan is to play Kalia, then Feather, um, let's make sure that... I can't even do both. No, I can't even do both because... Huh, the mana is kind of messy. Mm, okay, well... If that's the case, I can play Feather and just hold up final payment. I don't mind that. If they kill Feather, that's okay. But on the other hand, uh, I think... Oh, I'm just gonna play Kalia. Alright, so we've got the final payment up. If they try to kill Kalia, we can final payment, sacrifice, and kill Judith. Uh, my opponent's stuck and kind of giving up, I guess. We're like way behind on life though. I guess I'll just do this and attack. Yeah, we're never activating this. <laughs> Let's be real here. And on the next turn, we can play Aurelia and pump the Scargan Hellkite. Uh, there's Discarding Hand Size. Alright. Well, unfortunately, wasn't much of a game there, but cleaned up their two threats with the Sweeper. Had another removal spell if we needed it. I'll take that as a win. Let's go on to another one. Alright, another control deck in Niv Mizzet Reborn. I'll take this one. Going first to Heck yeah. Um so I think I just lead with the guild gate. Eh, like getting the scry value is cool and all, but let's get a little more a little bit more information about what we draw naturally first. So we're gonna to get to go guild gate into foundry signet, and then we could either play mana geode or you can play Kalia. I don't think it's worth playing Kalia that early. Just Fields of the Dead, card that's not going to cast uh, Niv Mizzet there. I think it's better to just get the develop the mana early. So we're going to play Mana Geode into Temple of Silence, and then we can start thinking about what we actually want. I mean, against a deck like this, we probably just want all pro proactive stuff. Um, so all the removal that we have is not too useful. Well, I guess I'm scrying with Mana Geode anyway. I don't think we really want lands here. Alright, so we've got five mana. Um, if they play some sort of mana artifact, we are definitely playing Opportunistic Dragon. Sacrifice an artifact? Sure. Uh, I'll sacrifice this one. 
We don't really need the mana. It's just, you know, kind of nice. All right, let's play Kalia. Uh, yeah. Play Kalia, get some, you know, load up here. Uh, Vilas is not the best in this matchup, but whatever. Uh, okay, so we've got lands for the next two turns. All right, let's play Godless Shrine. Final payment. Being able to take out a creature is nice, but I feel like we're not going to see that many creatures. Yeah, this might be bad, but like, I don't know, our deck has a lot of removal. That's probably blanked by our opponent playing Nib Mizzet, right? One, two, three, four, five. Land makes six next turn. Deafening Clarion, you got it. Command zone it is. We can just play Aurelia. We can also just play Kalia. That is mana efficient. Yeah, we like we drew a lava coil anyway. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we just do this. Like keep at it, right? I can only draw one of these anyway. They're all angels, unfortunately. Okay, so what's gonna happen? We're at five mana this turn. Next turn we're at six mana. Uh, no, 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 we're at six mana this turn. Next turn we can be at seven. You know, Seraph of the Scale seems like the best because it's got that afterlife, which has got to be pesky for them. Um, we can sandbag this Aurelia until we have Seraph down. Like, if they sweep with Seraph down and we get the two spirits, we can start pumping them and attacking with Aurelia. All right, we're just going to keep on jamming threats. Yeah, I'm just going to play... Oh, I can just play uh, Dracoset this turn. Sure, why not? Boom. Um, okay, let's do this. Fetch. Get another red source, I suppose. Let's just play Dracus Ah, oh, it survived! I wasn't expecting that. One problem with this deck is that you only have one creature with haste, and that's Sargon Hellkite. So if they're just trying to set up for a sweeper here or something, it's pretty scary. Okay, Teferi, Tyrant Scorn. Alright. And Casualties of War. That's not actually at its best against this deck, but it's still fine. Okay, so I can Lava Coil this. Play Aurelia. They didn't pick up a Sweeper. If I Lava Coil this and play Aurelia, it's a lot of damage. I think I, I think I just gotta get in there. Or if I think they're playing a Sweeper, or like if I think they might be playing a Sweeper, I guess it's better to play Seraph of the Skills. Okay, that's, we'll do that. Alright, let's do four tiny target and three damage to this one. They're at eight. Mm. Yeah, this is the only way for it, like, it kind of sucks because, uh,. I mean, my opponent can just sweep here, and but like, this is the only way for me to have a creature on the battlefield uh, for the next turn. And if they don't have a sweeper, it's like really good. But let's be real here. To fairy, okay. Well, you gotta do something about Dragoseth. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've done the hero thing. They do have a Tyrant Scorn. So I can actually play Villas and. <laughs> a Reef Soul. 
Hmm, I, I'm really not hot about them having an instant with uh, Teferi up. Not about that one bit. They're going to play sorceries. They're going to play them at sorcery speed. So in order to do that, we need to attack Teferi with both. And this is annoying. Because now they don't have to use their removal. Alright, let's play Vilas. <laughs> Mills is not great here, but if we pay two life and, uh, you know, shrink itself in response to a, uh, yeah, okay, oh, I'm gonna do this. Then we get to draw a couple cards, and that's kind of nice. Yeah, like, we don't really have any hand aid. <laughs> We've got this stuff. So, opponent's at nine. They tap out for something inconsequential here. Like, if they just played niv Mizzet or something, we could assemble lethal with Aurelia targeting either one of these and Price of Fame on niv Mizzet. But, I mean, they've got to have good cards, right? They could potentially casual... You know, they don't actually have the right colors for casualties of war, do they? Ravager Worm? Okay, so that's going to fight... Talia? No, it's fighting Seraphim skills. Okay. Maybe my opponent is mindful. That's actually a way to play around the uh, sweeper. Okay, so how much mana do we have? We've got nine? Okay. Um, so I can Aurelia pump something, attack. Does, this doesn't have reach, does it? Okay, good. <laughs> Gotta make sure. Alright, so Angel of Grace is a pretty nice one. Attack for seven. Even if they do sweep, we've got Angel of Grace um, and attack a bit. All more creatures fly. None of theirs do. They did play a land tapped, right? All the shocks are turned off also now. Yeah. I mean, if they tap low for a sweeper, it's possible that they also have an answer for Angel of Grace. But even if they do, we get to untap, play Dracuseth, and make them kill it before I get to attack with it. Can only have so many answers to Dracuseth. <laughs> Ravager Worm is very sad because it can't actually answer Field of the Dead. Alright, what you got, Mr. Miroslav? I'm just going to cut to the uh, the end of this game, if this is what's happening. Alright, no timeouts. Let's go to my turn and attack with everything, I suppose. Alright. Hey, we won one. And Sniv Mizzet, no, no less. Well, he didn't have a sweeper, I mean, that's a big deal. Okay, let's go and do another game. Here we go against Vraska, four man of Vraska this time. Um, this is a little awkward because it does have all three colors, but it doesn't actually have the ability to cast one of these angels on turn three. I think this is actually fine. We've got the temple and we're going second, so if we can find a white source or a black source, not red source, white source or a black source, we should be okay. I think this matchup, like, they can kill Kalio with Vraska. Like, their commander kills our commander, but... Uh, yeah, keep. But, that's not really the value off of our commander. Oh, Gilded Deuce. Hello. Getting right to it. Okay, there's a white source. Uh, two mana would... Uh, something that costs two mana would be good. Um, I... Yeah, I, I don't think I need this. I think we can... Bottom it. Dragon's like fine, but not super spectacular. Um, 
We just want to hit our mana sources. We'll play Feather on turn three and then refuel with Kalia. And if they have enough, they have enough removal to uh, deal with that. Then, then, then they do. But <laughs> it's going to take a lot. So I need to play the planes next turn to make sure that I can play Feather. I could also just go after like if they just play Vraska here. I could just go after her. That's not a terrible idea either. That's fine. I think a lot of these things I don't care about that much. Ooh, Crashing Drawbridge. That's an interesting one. So if I just play Feather, they're going to play Vraska and kill it. They play Kalia, then they sacrifice and they draw a card. I'm not in love with that. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> I think we're going to have to fight through our opponent's removal one way or another. It's just letting them have it is noxious, but fine. Nope, there's Vraska. Killing it. I'm gonna start drawing cards too. All right, well let's play Kalia and uh, refuel uh, or not. I guess that's a thing too. It's not exactly what I was looking for. I'll be honest. Garrick, jeez. How are we gonna fight down Car uh, Kalia, huh? Alright, let's go to the command zone. So I'm gonna be Devil Garrick. I uh, can't let that stick around. This is a really good start from them. Come on, sacrifice the food token! Why would you sacrifice the land this early? Alright, so we're gonna bedevil um, that. And then we're gonna play the drawbridge. Better get my red sources ready. Robert. All right, what you got? Nissa. All right, that's pretty good. Let's go to six. Oh, well, we can block this for whatever that's worth. This whole them playing planeswalkers thing is not working out too well for us. You can also go after Vraska. Oh, this is a creature. It might just die to the showstopper. I'm not really big on this whole sacrificing lands thing. I'll be honest. Okay, so. Maybe we got a 6-6. Six, six. I think we play the 6-6 six, six, that might randomly kill our opponent's creatures. It might kill our drawbridge also, but I think... Okay, well, I, I mean, I've got a couple options here. I can play Doom Whisper, just give it haste and attack Nissa. Like, that's pretty good. They can kill my drawbridge. I guess that's actually gotta be the play. Oh, they can kill it with Brontodon. So I'm really only getting one shot with, uh, with this. Unless they get super greedy. I'm gonna take a fair amount of damage. Let's just kill Nissa. Yeah, all right. And if they have commit more to the board, maybe I can get them with Rakdos. So like here they they only have four mana this turn. I mean, they did this to themselves. They sacrificed two lands. They could have sacrificed food tokens instead. Insignia, you got it. All right, take eight, drop them down. Killing the drawbridge, you got it. That one may not have survived anyway. And that's route, okay. Oh, I guess they got the lance back. Okay, so, can we get a Plague Wind Rakdos? Oh, is this better? Just do this. 
That is not bad. Kills this, this, and this. No, I think I need to pressure down Vraska. Alright, I'm just gonna play Rakdos and cross my fingers. Here we go! Stop the show. Oh man, we just got one of them that was gonna die to the Clef Deafening Clarion anyway. What a letdown. Exile. Take six. Let's make a food token, sacrifice that. Yeah, Vraska's gonna be a problem. Um, I mean, I can play Dracuseth and hope that they can't kill it. I've got a final payment that's not really gonna do much. What do we do here? Can Price of Fame this? I don't hate that, actually. The problem is I can't combine the Price of Fame with anything. Alright, like, they could just have something that gets swept up by Deafening Clarion on the next turn. This is not ideal, like, it's so inefficient with my mana. But, I think it's my play. I could try and see if there's anything that goes with the Deafening Clarion. Alright, so we're gonna price of pain this Thrashing Ground to Dawn, regret regrettably. So, who would like to play a Deafening Clarion next turn? How about Ritual Assault? Pain Signet. Lost Deafening Clarion. Sure. I guess? I don't know. Like, that, that's not really. It's really not great. As long as we win, okay, they're, they're picking up on that they should sacrifice the food tokens. So I guess we definitely need Clarion to kill these two. These three. These four. <laughs> well, we're getting good value off the Deafening Clarion, but I don't know how I'm going to deal with the Vraska ult. Maybe I can just do a full defense against them and uh, make sure that nothing ever hits me again. But like in a world of Questing Beast and uh, what's the Shifting Ceratops, it seems pretty unlikely. They should, yeah, I was about to say, if they kill my Arcane Signet, I can't do anything here. Yeah, I mean, I've got Ritual Sit. That's not going to kill Storov. Yeah, okay. Perhaps keeping both on top was not the best idea. If I had another land here, I could play Kalia and then at least sacrifice it for final payment on here, but I do not. Alright, our opponent got us. Good game. Alright, against another uh, M20 Mythic Tricolor Legend. This hand, we're going to go ahead and mulligan this. We definitely want to hit our land drops early. Ooh, I guess I keep... I'd rather keep this than go down to six, right? Right? If I hit... If I hit two lands pretty early on, we could be okay. We've got the Lava Coil to deal with... Uh, to deal with Kaikar. I feel like this Tome of Legends is kind of a free roll. I mean, it's using up our mana, but... And also... Uh, cycles itself anyway and it you know generates cards with the, with Kalia. All right, let's play a tunnel of legends hoping to hit our land naturally but if we draw it off the tome of legends that's good too if we don't hit it at all then we're in trouble if our opponent plays a threat that we need to lava coil that's where things get a little awkward Ooh, we hit it anyway okay well mm -hmm. all right i'll just Play Kalia? Is that good? Run it straight into a counterspell? I mean, there's only Quench and Tail's End, right? Nice. I will accept any ordering of those triggers. We get to draw two cards next turn to try to hit a land drop. Feeling pretty good. Very time-rendered. Lovely. 
I'll put it in hand. Let's draw a card. Really awkward if you don't hit land. Woo! <laughs> oh man. That was lucky. Alright, let's get another mountain so that we or like another red source so that we have Skarg and Hellkite at some point. We're gonna play Kalia here, we're just gonna pretend that we didn't find anything off of it. Oh no, I whiffed. Actually, like, if any of these are an upgrade on what we already have, I could take them. Like, Aurelia might be an upgrade on Sarah Guardian. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I'll discard Sarah Guardian. Alright, Teferi. This might be a bad idea. Alright, so if they're just playing Kaikar, that's fine. We got the Lava Coil for that. We even have... Um, Trashing Drawbridge, which is just kind of cool. All right. But I want to hit lands. I want to hit lands more than anything. Hey, hey! Wow, I'm getting really lucky at this. <laughs> All right. Let's get rid of that Kaikar. Let's get rid of that Teferi. Jeez. Tome of Legends is the gift that keeps on giving. Just has an endless supply of counters on edge. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we were about to draw a ton of cards and uh, start playing big flyers. All right, that was quick. Let's go to another one. All right, playing against Yurok the Desecrated. Well, I like this hand. Uh, we've got Price of Fame and Epic Downfall. Usually, if you can keep people off of Yurok, you're pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and keep this uh, Sacred Foundry. Lead off this. Mm, yeah, I mean, keep them off the Yurok and then just. Play creatures and attack with them. <laughs> Yurak also does not do a good job of blocking all of my flyers, so I have that to look forward to. Yep. This is going about as I expected. Paradise Druid, alright. Sure thing. Um, might be good to get my mana up instead of just jamming Kalia this turn. I think so, because, I mean, let's say next turn they do whatever. I still have Kalia plus end of turn Price of Fame on the following turn. I think just getting my mana up is pretty powerful. I think Arcane Signage is also just like the most powerful thing you can do on turn two. Um, whoa, Ayara. Okay. I was not expecting that one. That's fine. I guess it triggers twice with Theorok. And they get to sacrifice it to draw a card? Alright, I, I guess I need to take down Ayara. It prevents them from drawing an extra card. I have the epic downfall for Yurik, after all. Um, Alright, so I do want lands. Uh, I can just put Dracoseth here, and then we get to draw it with Kalia. Or I can play Seraph of the Scales first. Just to be a little more mana efficient. Yeah, Dracoseth seems fine here. Well, on the following turn, I can just go Seraph Skills anyway. Alright, let's just do this. Um, yeah, Kalia, pick up that Dracoseth, or, hmm, ooh, jeez, this is a draw three? This is the legendary draw three? Alright, so they probably don't have a ton of sweepers, so Skargan Hellkite isn't an absolute must-have. Uh, Villas is, it's not, it's not the time for the game. Oh, we can just pick up all these. We've got land to, try, to play this turn. All right, cool. Legendary draw three with Kalia. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and pass the turn. They're probably just gonna jam Yurok. That's what these decks tend to do. They play Yurok and then try to do something after that. Unfortunately, our next turn, no, next turn we play Epic Downfall plus Seraph. That's pretty good. So let's Epic Downfall that. Seraph of the Scales. We don't actually have an answer on this next turn for uh, Yurok, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah, okay. We're just going to attack for 7 in the air and then play Sarah Angel. They could do some wacky stuff uh, if they have land Yurok here. 
But I feel like they'd be slamming down the land if they had it. Casualty support. Ow. Well, now I don't have a black source. Well, I kinda do. Okay, well that's not good. If we draw another land, we can play Sarah Angel, attack with Kalia, and then play Safara. That's gotta be pretty difficult for them to deal with. Golden Egg, you got it. If not, we'll just have to settle for Sarah Angel. Ritual set. Alright, Command Zone it is. Killing their own creature. Alright, Fabled Passage isn't bad. Um... <laughs> so I can either play a 3 3 flyer that draws me a bunch of cards or a 4 4 flyer, and both of them have vigilance. Well, I think one of them is a little better than the other, so let's do that one. Right, we've got triple red, but we don't have double black. Let's get a swamp here. So opponent's probably just going to jam Yarok. Oh, they need a land if they want to play Yarok because they swept up one of their uh, mana sources. I guess this also dies to ritual of soot. Like it's got lower converted mana cost, whatever that's worth. Not a ton. We draw land, we get our seventh land, we can play Dracuseth. Uh, but Probably better. Okay, here's the arrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, lava coil. Well, this is unfortunate. I think I should just play the most expensive card in my hand. Oh, our opponent might be able to go a little crazy here. Death touch, lifelink. I mean, I double block it if I have the opportunity. Cloud Concealer, draw two cards. That's fine. Like. My opponent draws a bunch of like, this isn't going to come down to cards, this is going to come down to board position. I've got plenty of cards. That's not the issue here. Alright, what else you got? Which is Vengeance? Probably just for, uh, for human? Alright, command zone it is. Yurik can attack now. Alright. Some answer for Yurik would be good. I already use the price of fame, unfortunately. That Arboreal Grazer is very sad. Alright, there's land number seven. Okay, well if our opponent doesn't have an answer, like Dracoseth does the business, we can also attack with Sarah Angel and uh oh. If we tap correctly, we can play a Spawn of Mayhem after. We're at 16. It does do a lot. It's a little safer to do that. Like, if I play Dracoseth and they just play a removal spell of basically any kind, I'm in a lot of trouble. I should attack first here. If I play Aurelia, there's like a chance they just chump block. So if they're chump blocking, I can't make that play anyway. I can play, you know, Safara actually seems not bad, but I'm not really protecting anything either. Yeah, okay, let's let's just get Jack to zip down. Opponent, if you have an answer, you have an answer. If you don't, watch out. <laughs> Just draw a few cards and play some lands, it'll be fine. Well, their decision doesn't seem to be easy. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Okay, um, so they're gonna kill Dracuseth, is what I'm getting here. <laughs> oh! 
Or they may have... Really? They want... Th that has to be a mistake. Like, they could have done... They could have just killed Jakuset there. Alright, well. I'll take it. Temple of Silence. Um, is that accomplishing much? Well, let's see what's on top of our deck. Yeah, I think we do want to land here. Um, okay, so. We're gonna take a lot of damage. But I think this is an okay spot. As long as we tap correctly, we can play Spawn of Mayhem here. Go 4 3 3. Yeah, okay. Drag it out. Spew fire over their entire board. 4 damage. 3 and 3. Spawn of Mayhem. I could have done more damage this turn if I had played um, Aurelia, like I probably should have. Right. Get the life steal, life link off the table. If they play Ronus, it's not quite good enough. I mean, I can chump block. Like, Ronus makes this a 20 whatever, but I can chump block with the Spawn of Mayhem. Not land on top might not actually do something. I was thinking like, oh yeah, Villas. Uh, uh, that'll give me the, enough mana to play Villas and uh, hit something. I think a cheap removal spell would have been the best card to actually have. Yeah, we're going to no blocks this. Alright, you got something, opponent? You're going to need it. Perhaps Liliana? Agent of Treachery? Neither of these cut it. Well, Agent of Treachery on Darkest Death is really good. I shouldn't say that. I can only do 4 damage with this. So they need to filter? No, that was a misclick. And they can gain 3 life, go to 11. Green, green, black. Okay, they don't want the life gain off of the golden egg? Nissa, who shakes the world, I see. Magnificent world. So they wanted to make a ton of mana. Got it. The land shall conquer you. They can make, it, make up to 8 mana here. Lawless Giant, does that kill me? How many creatures do they have? Four. Alright. I'll take it. Yeah, it just came down to them not having an answer for Dracoseth, I suppose. Alright, one let's let's play one more. Looks like we got another Yarak deck to finish off the evening. Ooh. This hand is. I think this hand's Got too many expensive cards. I'm gonna mulligan. Like, okay, if we can draw a red source, maybe we can do something. Um, there we go. Okay, cool. Like, Kalia's great at drawing cards like Safara and Opportunistic Dragon and Feather. When we've got three of those, or sorry, when we've got, you know, four of those and just three lands. We don't really have room to do much else. Basically, all we can do with that hand is play big things, which is what Kalia lets us do anyway. This looks like a very similar deck. All these cards are <laughs> cards that we saw already. Wishing well. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'm mixing the games up. This was in the Kai Car game. All right. Um, so we could uh. Uh, we could hold up a removal spell here, but I'm just going to jam Kalia. Alright, just pick up the one creature here. Um, if they play... Uh, they, no, they only have three mana. They can play... They can get up to four this turn. 
Dungeon Geists. Tap Kalia for as long as Dungeon Geist sticks around? Sure, no problem. That uh, is acceptable. Alright, um, I think Opportunistic Dragon or Feather are the choices here. Um, like, the Witching Wall doesn't... I don't feel like it matters a ton yet. Like, if they're spending this turn drawing two at the Witching Wall, that's fine. I think we're early enough in the game that that's not too much of an issue. So, yep, here's Yurok, unsurprisingly. Oh, nice! We even drew something we can do with the uh, Mortifier of a Devil. Which one do I want to play? I th mm, this one can't destroy our enchantments, this one can. I think that Guardian Project is good enough with the Eric that I'm just going to use the Bedevil here. Alright, and let's, uh, yeah, let's send with the Feather. I'll trade three for three damage. There's a Reef. That is very good with the Eric. They don't have a land. Oh, or they do have a land. Okay. This is the deck that really makes your outcome. Ooh, that's a good draw. I can sweep these up. Still have mana up for Yurok, or, or for uh, Mortify and Yurok. Sure. Let's play both. Just need to get that. Uh, we need to get that Risen Reef off the table here. So if they just play land Yurok, Mortify into turn, it's fine. X equals 4, alright, you can get 4-4. Four, four. It's fine. Get my turn. Epic Downfall? That actually doesn't work on Hydroid Crisis. Um, okay, well... Kalia costs five. I'm just stealing the wishing wall. That's not very good. Okay, I'll just play Kalia. It's more mana efficient. I could potentially play Opportunistic Dragon plus Epic Downfall in the next turn. Right, let's see. We've got five cards in, or we've got five cards in hand. We can pick up two of these. I think this deck might just want like another land or two. <laughs> Stalling on lands like this is not not a good look. If they want to draw with Witching Well, I think that's fine also. I can try to stop the show with Rakdos, but considering I have more creatures than my opponent, that seems not great. <laughs> Neither of those are resistant to. Resistant to Rakdos's effect. Playing Cloudkin Seer there is kind of interesting. Are they going to attack with Hydroid? They're really ramping this out. Okay, well, let's steal the Witching Well now. With this opportunistic dragon. Oh, interesting. Gain a life? Well. Maybe I can give them one more turn. How much mana do they have? They have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine mana, that's that's a lot. We could be looking at a mass manipulation or something here, which I have absolutely no defense against. I could play the expensive Sarah Guardian. They're playing Cauldron Familiar. But I think that, I think it'll be too slow if that's their plan. I don't know, like I, I don't have an instant that I can hold up. They do have more creatures than me now, so Rakdos isn't totally crazy. I think it's better to play Sarah's Guardian. If they play Mass Manipulation or something and steal a bunch of creatures, then I'll play Rakdos and stop the show. I'll just be like, hold up. We gotta stop the show here. It does look like they're gearing up for something like that, Agent of Treachery or Mass Manipulation. We are at 24, which is a healthy life total. Wicked Wolf. Sacrifice of food, kill Feather, that's fine. Just 
still got the biggest thing on the field in Sarah's Guardian. I'm really surprised that they haven't just ran out the Yurok again. Most of the things in this deck get powered up by, by it. Ooh, if I can get the Spawn of Mayhem down before playing Rakdos, that's pretty sweet. Um, if I could play two creatures with flying this turn, that'd be cool, but I cannot. Um, I can attack with Sarah Guardian and see if they want to do a double block. I can play Safara and then attack with Sarah's Guardian. Does it say destroy? Oh, it does say destroy. Oh. Hmm, hold on. Let's let's do this. Is there a counter spell? No, like Oh, they can just uh draw with Witching Well. I guess that's what their plan is. Or they can make a a, a food with the the goose. Alright, let's see let's see if we can get this Safara plus Rakdos combo going. Safara does not protect herself, notably, but she will protect the other two. They just made a food token. I really am getting hit by mass manipulation, aren't I? Cameo? Agent of Treachery, yeah, they're really digging for that. Okay, fine. Um, alright, let's do the thing. Oh, but this is a demon. This is a demon. <laughs> I should just do this. The getting's already good. No need to try and make it even better. Making another food. Okay. And I guess the Wicked Wolf is going to be indestructible. We don't know if it's going to survive or not. Let's see what happens. Stop the show. All right, I will accept. I don't know if it like, if if this you know we lost the flip on Collier or whatever. Um, that is a complete mystery. We'll just go ahead and epic downfall this. We have the mortify uh, for Yarok, and I don't think this game is going to last too much longer. So let's attack Cameo with Safara, and we'll attack Face with the other two. We're not missing lethal yet, are we? No, not quite. We did have 15 there, let's bring them down to 3. Alright, well, it's all up to our opponent now. Alright, there we go. Well, we, we got some wins, got some losses today. That was a lot of fun, <laughs> this deck. If you like if you like playing big flyers, you like attacking in the air for lots of damage, you like activating Kalia and re like looking at the top 7 cards of your deck, this, this might be a good deck for you. Might not be the most powerful, might not be able to stand toe to toe with uh, decks like Golos out there, but but it's it's doing some powerful things. It's got some strong cards, and uh, yeah, it has enough removal to survive a bunch of you know mid range decks. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, edition of the Brawl Project. I'll be back for more. Check out my articles on ChannelFireball.com. Uh, we're trying to get them posted on Wednesdays, and and also check out the giveaways on my Twitter. And, uh, and finally, if you ever want to play against me, I battle viewers all the time at, on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Sunnyvale, Monday through Thursdays, uh, uh, noon Pacific. All right, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.